Hello everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday Sew Along. Um, today we're going to be working on um, block number nine. And um, I got the cataracts removed, but now I, it's um, a toss up what I can see and what I can't see. But I can see all the wrinkles and crinkles, just so you know. But now um, I've got uh, some things to share with you about our uh, block. We're going to be doing the um, V block tool and the Tucker trimmer tool tonight. And um, I have the block already made because I want to show you that first of all. And let's talk a little bit about this. First of all, this is another nine patch block. So since these are 12 inch blocks, each unit has to finish four inches to be that 12 inch block. Now, of course, I could make this block in other sizes because the Tucker trimmer will make 12 different sizes and that's what we use for the center and the corners and the V-block tool will make 11 different sizes so I could make this whole block in a 3 inch finished unit that would mean that my V-block units would be 1 inch finished my combo units would be 1 inch finished and my center would be 1 inch finished or I could even make this in an 18 inch block that would mean that the center would be six inches, my V blocks would be six inches, and my um, combo units would be six inches. So that is an option for you, uh, but our, we're doing four inch finished units. So the first thing we're gonna do is this center hourglass unit. And this is a review. We've done hourglass units before, but it's been several weeks since we've done hourglass units, and we're gonna use the Tucker trimmer. So the uh, basic math for figuring out how big your squares that you start with is if you're doing an hourglass unit you start with squares that are one and a half inches bigger than your finished size so i had to start with five and a half inch squares and by the way when i'm doing combo units let me move it out here where you can see the whole thing when i'm doing combo units i also start with four and a half inch uh, or one and a half inch bigger than my finished size. So I have five and a half inch squares for my combo units. And you're going to be making four of those. And we'll be talking a little bit about that. But first we're going to do the hourglass unit and we'll um, walk through the process of that. And just for those of you who um, maybe are new or haven't uh, seen this for a while, this is our Tucker Trimmer chart that kind of gives you a clue of if you're doing combo units you start with an inch and a half larger if you do quarter square or hourglass units you start with an inch and a half larger if you're doing half squares you can get by with just one inch larger Now that doesn't give you a lot of wiggle room so that is something to consider um, if you start with a square that's a little bit bigger you have a little more to trim away but sometimes that's a little bit easier to handle so Tony's over here shaking her head. So that may be something you want to consider for any unit that you're using the Tucker trimmer to trim away. That's just a, a personal preference. So for our um, first thing, let me move this camera over here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, I have my plate with all of my sizes. Oh, oh, fooey. It's not going to work for me. Okay, so we'll just use the overhead camera. I don't know what's wrong with that camera. So I'll just kind of do part of it over here. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, hang on a minute. Here's what we're going to do. I didn't want to make you seasick while I move this camera that I do know is working. And we'll just kind of do everything over here to the side and we won't really do an overhead camera. So... You just see the workings of the camera while I move stuff around and I may have to we'll just see if this will work you know necessity is the mother of invention how that works so you'll just have to pretend you can see me press stuff um, so first of all let me grab my magic wand and I'm gonna change to this camera and it's sideways or upside down or something so let me get it where I can 
maneuver it. And I checked all of that. Oh. <laughs> Technology, ain't it grand? I had this same issue all day long with other stuff, so it seems only fitting. Let me move this over. Now, give me just a second, I'll turn this around where it's not upside down, and then maybe that'll make it easier. We're going to transform, rotate. Okay, now we can kind of see. Um, what we're going to do is, first of all, draw our lines on for our um, hourglass unit. And I have my two squares, and I decided to use a blue and a red, a, a blue kind of tone on tone and a red print. I need to draw a line diagonally across the back of one of them, and it doesn't really matter which one. And I like to use my um, broken magic wand, but it won't work on these five and a half inch squares. So I have to have the whole magic wand to get across my square. And I want to make sure I can get um, a line dark enough that I can see. And there is my unit. And I'm just going to back this up. And I've just got too many things here to get where you can see it. I think we'll be able to manage it. Let me turn off the light. See, this is what happens when I take a break. I come back and, you know, how things, you know, Thanksgiving and then um, my cataract surgery just made it where it wouldn't have been a good day to do a sew along but I can do this now all right so I'm going to stitch right down the lines that I drew close the bobbin door I did have on my regular sewing foot that wasn't a quarter inch patchwork I did notice that and change it back so at least I got that far and by the way this is the week you'll need to clean your machine if you've gotten yourself on a once a month routine because tomorrow's the last day of the month. So I'm just going to go all the way across and when I get to the other side I'm going to park my needle and now you want to grab something big enough to protect your fingers to cut across this. So here's my uh, piece that I've been working on maybe there okay so the trouble with the camera when it decides it doesn't want to work you have to shut everything down and start from scratch it, <laughs> excuse me oh my goodness what a day what a day so I'm gonna cut down across the um, between my lines of stitching and then you want to press, and I like to press one way or the other. Whatever color I press to on one of my half squares, I want to press both of them that way. We're going to give it just a little finger press here. And then we're going to press the other one to the same direction. So I'm going to press it toward my blue square again. And normally I would take this to the iron and give it a good... Uh, press with the iron with a little pressing solution but I'm just going to give it a good finger press I may have Tony do parts of it but I can go ahead and buddy these up you can come and turn the iron on so it can heat and I'll have her press I'll get it started so it'll get ready all right so now I need to draw my lines on the opposite corners and I'm going to go across the original seam. So let me grab my pen. And you may have to find um, whatever kind of marking tool you use, you have to be able to see it on both fabrics. So I think this one will show up on both fabrics. We'll see here in a second.
All right, so now I've got my lines drawn on both. We'll back it up and see if it can go over my shoulder. Just there we go. We're a little straighter now. Now we're going to stitch right on the lines. And I'm making sure that right here that's nested well so that when I stitch across that seam, I get a nice um, precise corner where the uh, fabrics meet the way I want them to. When I get to the other side, I'm just going to turn and cross over and then I'm going to come back on the other line. And I'm going to get rid of this for a second. Stitch all the way across. And again, I can feel right here with my fingers to see whether my um, two pieces are nested. So that's going to give me the nice sharp corners that I want. Once I get across, then I'm ready to cut in between. So again, use something um, that's big enough to protect your fingers. My fingers aren't won't be protected if I try to use my magic wand as a cutting guide. And I'm just going to stitch across here, and then I'm going to have Tony press that. So before I hand this to her, I am going to twizzle the center just by twisting just a little bit, so that when I press this, or when Tony presses this, that is going to lay down flatter, and I give it just a little bit of a finger press, and I'll show you the back of it here in a second. So that I've got a nice little twizzle in the center. I'll hand these off, and then I'm going to grab the tucker trimmer. So I can trim over here. And so we've got one of them pressed. Tony's got the acorn pressing pin, adding a little bit of that. She, she used that this weekend for something she made, and she said it really um, added um, a lot of precision. So on this, let me see if I can find my little mat so you can see what I'm trimming. So I don't have a whole lot of extra room, but I have enough that you can see. I'm looking for the line that says it's four and a half inches, and that's going to go on one seam, the bold solid lines going on the other seam, and then the icon that has the half circle on it is going to go in the top right corner because I'm right-handed. If I'm left-handed, I simply turn that half circle icon to the top left because that is... Um, where the half inch measurements are sized from, from that half circle. If I'm trimming something that's a whole measurement, is there a rotary cutter over there? Then I want to use the whole circle. So I'm going to cut up and across, and I think I'm, it's about time to change blades on my rotary cutters because my small one was not cutting well. So I'm going to turn around, and this time I'm going to put the four and a half inch mark right on the first seam. The bold solid line goes on the other seam, and the four and a half inches line, the cleanup line, goes on my cut edges. So I can cut up and across, and I know this looks a little awkward just because of the way I'm sitting, so you can see. But that creates my four and a half inch center. So that's how I did the centers. I'm not going to take the time to trim the other one because I want to show you what you do with the um, combo units. So there's my center. I'm just going to lay it aside. So now my combo units, I have... Um, I'll turn it here. I have this all set up where uh, if I'm doing normally my uh, machine camera, you can also see me, but... You know, it is what it is. So, I have two background squares and a blue, a lighter blue, and a uh, my flag print again. And I'm going to make my combo units. And here's one of them, just so you can see the color combinations. I've got um, my blue and red are on one 
half of the uh, square and then my back run is on the other half. So here's how I uh, um, achieve that. So I have my blue and my red squares first. And I'm going to lay those face to face. Again, I have to have my whole magic wand to be able to draw my lines on. And I flipped it over where I could see that little etched line. And I'm going to draw all the way across, point to point. Um, I'm actually going to put that etch line point to point, and I'm going to draw on both sides. Oh, Tony says i got to switch cameras. So, I'm drawing on both sides. And I turned this on before we started, and it was working, and who knows why. So, there is the first um, part I'm going to sew. So, I'm just going to twist this just a little bit and I'm going to stitch on the line. Now my my line got a little wild. I'll show you here in just a second. Right here can you see two lines? If you do that just make sure you know which one you're actually supposed to be using to guide from. Because since I'm using a, a permanent gel pen I can't really erase my markings, but I can make sure I know which line I'm supposed to actually be guiding from. When I get to the other side, I'm going to clip my fabric tag and part my needle. Then I'm going to go back to my cutting area. And I'm going to cut between the two lines. I've got my tucker trimmer here, so I'm just going to use that as my cutting guide. And I'm cutting corner to corner across that between my two lines of stitching. Now this time, there you go. Oh, goodness, how did I get to there? Okay, so welcome to my world. This is the way sometimes <laughs> it happens. So what Tony is doing is pressing the um, square, the half square, with my blue and my um, little red flag print. And you're going to press to the same color. So she pressed toward the blue the first time, she's going to press toward the blue on the other one. Then I have two background squares to pair those two half squares up with. So I'm just going to lay my uh, background square face down and notice that the half square that has the blue and the red print is not quite as big as my background square. That's okay and that's the way I like it. Now theoretically I could cut whatever's going on the larger side of my combo unit. I could theoretically cut it smaller than these two squares. To me, that's just a recipe for confusion. So I don't do that. I just make sure that I cut all of them an inch and a half bigger than I need. And I have just a little extra room on this background square, but it makes it easier to handle. This time I'm going to draw my lines across the back side of my half square. And see, I could take this and trim it at this point and get a half square that's half blue and half red. I don't need that for this block. But that's the same unit um, that you actually need for the start of your combo unit. So we're going to just draw the line there and we're going to do the same thing with this one. And I'm, I'm just going to do uh, one of them, but you would draw your line across here as well. So then you're going to stitch on the lines just like we did uh, when we were doing the hourglass unit. We're going to stitch across here, and when we get to the other side, we're going to turn and go across the end and come back. And once you do that, you're going to end up with two combo units, and this is review as well. Most of you have done combo units before. They make really good um, units to build a block with. You can make all kinds of blocks and shapes using combo units. So I'm going to 
again cut across diagonally between the two rows of stitching and when I get that done then it's ready to press. Now at this point you can choose to press toward the two smaller triangles or you can press toward the larger triangle. I like to press to, toward the larger triangle because that's just kind of the way it wants to go anyway and you don't have to fight it. So I'll, Tony says I press the other way on this one so you just never know but I I think it li lays down better and it also could depend on what color you're using if you're using something really really light that this seam shadows through that also might make a difference but most of the time I'm going to press toward the larger triangle now to trim this um, I'm going to use my tucker trimmer again and what it uh, is especially good for is units that are square that have diagonal seams going both directions. This one doesn't go all the way across but it does stop in the center and I have a specific point in the center of my unit that I want to make sure I maintain. So I can put my four and a half inch line on this seam and even though it doesn't go all the way across I can line that up on the part of the seam where it falls, line up the long solid line on the other seam and I can trim two sides and notice I have just a little more um, on the edge of the white side to trim away but I don't have to fight it and fuss with it so I'm going to turn line up my four and a half inch lines on the edges of what I just cut and the diagonal lines go on my seams again so that I can line up and have a perfectly trimmed combo unit. So I am going to trim the other one because I want to show you something that happens with combo units. And notice I did not lay this down here the way the first one um, I trimmed, but what I'm looking for is the four and a half inch line and the long solid line and the point where it crisscrosses. I know that belongs right on the center point so I can trim two sides turn and trim the other two sides and I have perfectly trimmed combo units to go in my project. So I'm lining up again on those diagonal seams. The cut edges from the first uh, two sides that I trimmed are going on the edge where it says four and a half and that gives me my combo units. Now notice when I make combo units like this they are a mirror image. That's a good thing to know because you may not want them that way. You may want them to all lean the same way. Notice that if I lean the white part the same direction, these are opposite each other. So it depends on what you're going to make with this, but there is a way to make combo units so that all of them lean the same way. So it would have blue here and red here on both of the, of the units. That's a, um, a technique called uh, non mirror combo units and we do have the technique sheet for that if you want that. Um, that may be something that you want to do with your combo units. So I'm going to grab my um, whole block. Let me keep that here. So here's my block and I've got, let me see if I can get it where you can see the biggest part of it. So I've got my combo units in my corners and depending on how you arrange your pieces I could turn these around this way and create a whole different look by how I put my units together. So you don't have to put your units together way, the way I did and I'm going to show you some um, different options in a little bit. So now let's talk about the V-block units. The V-block unit is um, consists of the spike in the middle and the two little spiky points on the side. If you look at it this way, let me turn to the other camera so you can see. If you look at it this way, you can see that V that's formed. Oh. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tony, this is just one of those days. We're going to lay that over here and we're going to put this camera here. Okay, I think we can make this. And now it's upside down again. Hang on. Nope. Let me 
transform it again and rotate it and see. Okay, that's going to be better. It's still um, a little bit configured differently than the other camera. So a V-block unit has the two side triangles and a center triangle. Depending on how you're looking at it, it looks like a pyramid in the middle and two little spiky points. And this is where the name Peaky and Spike came from. And if you look at it this way, you actually see that V. And the V-block tool looks like this. Let me have that gray or the green mat so you can see all of the tool. And I'll give you the rundown. I have actually put some lines on my V-block tool to help me find the lines that I need and that I use a lot. I highlighted it with the Sharpie marker and I just wrote on the back side of my tool. If you don't want to, to actually put the Sharpie right on your tool, you could put a piece of scotch tape where you're going to highlight and mark and that uh, makes it a little easier to work with. But you're going to use this angled side along with several of the lines on the tool for cutting the shapes you need. So the first shape I'm going to cut is this pyramid shape the V and that's my center um, triangle and I'm actually going to cut that um, this time out of my background fabric. On that I don't have to have my um, fabric folded but I can have it folded and when I do then I actually am going to cut two at one time. So I can fold this whatever the width of my strip is, and my tool tells me if I want a four inch finished unit, I'm going to cut five inch strips. So I'm gonna fold this over at least two and a half inches because that's half of my five inch measurement. And then the dash line, it tells me that's the fold line for the center triangle, that goes right on the folded edge. And I have this long angled side to cut on. When I do that, I wanna make sure that I go when I fold that over, I fold it over far enough that I get um, all of this intact and I have a nice sharp point on that center. Now when I do this, I'm actually going to have that spike in the middle, peak in the middle, is going to be my background fabric rather than my colored fabric. And I'll show you why in just a second. So I ended up with two of those. And then I don't have to fold it again. I simply flip the whole thing top to bottom and line up this long center triangle trim line on my cut edge. It also lines up with the four inch finished unit line right there on the bottom. And I cut again and I automatically have two more because I had two pieces of fabric folded together. So that's my centers of my V-block unit. For the side triangles, I don't use the dash line, I use the bold solid line. This time I do have to have my uh, strip folded in order to get the mirror image that I need. So for my red one, I, the first thing I'm going to do is just cut off the selvage so I don't have to worry about getting that in my project. And I'm going to go all the way to the bold solid line, it says cut line for the side triangles and it ends up on the four inch finished unit line on the bottom of my strip and I'm going to make a cut. When I do that, I automatically have a pair and it's a mirror image pair, which is what I'm gonna need. I'll put it over here where you can actually see it. I'm gonna lay it up there with my center triangles. Now, I don't wanna flip the strip this time. I'm gonna move it down a little bit, but I'm just gonna twist around till I find this long diagonal line that comes almost to the corner. And notice it doesn't come exactly to the corner, it's over um, a little, almost a half inch right there, and that's going to go on the cut edge and the base of my strip. So you can see that right there and line up on the cut edge. It may or may not line up on a particular line up here, but it should be parallel. So I can see that I'm parallel, so I'm straight enough to work with, and I'm going to make another cut. And I could do that again and have another pair, but I don't need it for this block, so I'm just going to do two of them, and I'm going to grab two of my center triangles and show you how that works. 
I would do the same thing with my blue and cut some side triangles out of my blue. So I am going to lay my center triangles down and I'm going to take my side triangles and separate them and lay them down so I can see that this will end up being a square when I'm finished sewing. It is possible to lay it down this way and square. you could sew that. It will never trim to a V-block unit because it's just not the right shape. So you want to make sure before you stitch anything, lay them both on there so you can see if that is going to actually line up the way you want it to. So I'm going to grab my center triangle and I'm going to grab the side triangle and I'm going to put my center triangle in on the top next to my uh, presser foot and my side triangle is going on the bottom next to the feed dogs and I match up the tip, the pointy ends. This little flat part here, that's going to be at the bottom and you just let the um, center triangle fall where it's going to fall. And we're going to stitch right across that and I'm lining up with the edge of my presser foot and stitching right along the side for my first seam. And if you're doing several of these, you're always going to be more efficient to do assembly line style. So just grab the next one, get it ready to feed through. And we're stitching right along the edge using our presser foot as our quarter inch guide. And then we're going to get our fabric tag, park our needle, and there went my thread. What else can happen? The, stop, Tony. <laughs> Tony's making it worse. She's saying, what else can happen? I don't need help. You could run out of bobbin. Oh, <laughs> Well, at least it would tell you and you would stop. What she said, at least it will tell you and it would stop sewing. That is one nice thing about this machine. If, it, if there is no bobbin, it will not sew. So, anyway. I know, it's looking at my head. I did that on purpose so you could, you could see my face every now and then and know I'm really here. Um, so, this time I'm going to press toward the side triangle and I do like to give this a little finger press before I either stitch on the second side or take that to the iron and put, the, um, put a little heat to that. I'm going to go ahead and stitch on the second side. If you don't press back your first side triangle, you're gonna be getting your seam ripper out. And then you're going to match up the tip of this center triangle and the tip of this side triangle. You let the little flat part just fall where it's gonna fall at the bottom. And we're gonna line up, align the two sides along the long edge of your um, triangle pieces and I'm stitching right along the side and then I'm going to do the same thing with this one we're going to finger press and I often do this even if I even if I have six or eight or ten of these to do I finger press the first one stitch on the second one and then press them with the iron because sometimes if you're not careful um, pressing and you're just pressing um, the one side triangle that you've added you distort that second edge of your center triangle because it's a bias edge so you do have to be careful about that so now this time I'm going to grab my fabric tag and park my needle. Thank goodness this is a review from last time. And then I'm going to finger press and hand it off to Tony and let her press that one. And I'll show you the difference in what that looks like. Because you have the option of actually using your uh, V-block unit with um, your center triangle being the background and your side triangle being the color. 
and I'm going to show you some options of how you could put that together. So I'm ready to trim my V block unit. This um, V is what I'm looking for when I go to trim and I'm going to line up on my uh, tool the long diagonal line here and then the appropriate sized line on this side. And it's fairly easy to find because all I have to do is place this line on first, look for the number of the finished size I'm after. In this case, it's a four inch finished unit. And that number four needs to go right on the intersection here. And that's my finished size. I'm actually trimming this to four and a half inches because remember you have to have that extra half inch for your seam allowance. So the finished size is that long diagonal line and the point um, goes right on the finished size. Now I'm going to look for the four and a half inch measurements and that's what's going on my um, two sides that I've just previously trimmed. That's also going to leave a bold X at the top so that when I trim the next two sides, I'm not going to chop off the point and I'm going to be left with the exact seam allowance I need at the tip so that the next seam that comes across is going to come right to that tip. So let me trim the other one and show you how that works. Again, look for the finished size. That X is going to go right on the point and I'm going to go up and across and then I'm going to turn 180 degrees and the four and a half inch line is what I'm lining up here. There's also that little X with the four on it just above the center of the V block unit at the bottom just to remind me that I've got the correct measurement. So there's my units. Let me grab the V block that's blue so you can see easy the difference. Um, so I have two of my V-block units that I've made with a color side triangle and a background center triangle. I've got two that I've made with a color center triangle and background on the outside. So you may decide you want to rearrange the color combination of your project, which is totally fine. You can choose um, how you want to put yours together. You don't have to put yours together the way I did. And I wanted to show you some options for how uh, you might want to arrange. I'm going to put this over here. And find the right page. No, that's not where I put that. I've got a, there it is. See, I should never take a break. That's just all there is to it. <laughs> I put it on my clipboard because I thought I could hold the camera close to it so you could see it. These are three options and I'm going to put it on the camera so you can actually see it a little closer and talk about it. So I have three options of coloring that have the very same units that I just made. They all have an hourglass unit in the center. This one has four different colors. These two are just the two color version. And then this one has the V block unit that's kind of like this one where the, the center triangle is a color and the outside is a background. That's the way this one looks. This one and this one is more like this where the center triangle is a background and the color is in the side triangles. So you can do it either way. And then the uh, combo units, notice, um, what I talked about with them being a mirror image, the way I placed the, uh, the way they're placed in this picture, the pinks match together here and they're directly across from each other. So when you place those combo units in your corners, you'll want to pay close attention to how you have them arranged so that you get something that looks more like this. Now I can also choose this instead. If you do, that's going to require you to do a little more uh, finagling of your colors to get four different color combinations. So that is an option as well. Um, because if I turn this whole um, combo unit, instead of having the combo unit where the color is on the outside of the block, this one is turned so that the color is on the inside of the block 
like that. So it's hard to even see that the V-block units here on the side just match the color. So it creates a whole different look. Um, on your cutting instructions, it has um, the, the fabrics and the colors I used, but you can use, what, of course, whatever color you want. And that gives you the option of doing any of these three color combinations. And this is on um, the pattern that you'll download from Studio 180 Design. You can um, look at that then and decide how you want to arrange your colors. So, um, Tony's not, oh no, she is over there. Tony is over at the, um, she took the little computer over there. So, I, she hasn't told me I have other questions. Nope, no questions. So, I'm going to see if we can aim this over here. We have a, pull that quilt no, leave that there. Pull, yeah, pull that quilt over. Yeah, just pull that whole sliding thing over. I And I've got a quilt over here. There it is. Tony's standing in front of it. The, <laughs> the, um, the geisha panel, it's in beautiful reds and golds and greens. I did post that on our Instagram the other day and on Facebook. Um, I did not put a picture of the panel, so um, I had all the colors, just so you could see it and kind of know what was there. And Tony's been, um, come and hold this up so you can see the size. She's been working on a project out of a Kim Deal book. Now, she used Tucker Tools. She used the wing clipper and the um, Tucker, trimmer. Tucker trimmer. And did you use the square squared? Okay, so there are some units that you could have used the square squared. These were wonderful. <laughs> so anytime, especially if you're making small units, those tucker tools make your life a whole lot easier. So just so um, you're aware that if you have a project from some other designer, if it has a combo unit or a wing clipper um, unit, a, a flying goose, even the square squared, she has an hourglass in, unit in there that measures oh, three inches finished. Square. And she just figured out she did use square squared for two inch finished square squared units. So you can use your tools to make other um, designers projects. You just have to do a little investigating and be um, a little bit of a block detective to determine, first of all, what units you need and second of all, what sizes um, of units you're going to be making. So therefore, what um, starting squares and strips you, you need to get started with your project. So next week, I'll start a little sooner and check on my camera. So who knows what happened? It, it's just kind of the way things happen. But I will check um, and we'll try to have the cameras all set up the way they're supposed to. Um, so you'll see a little bit more clearly the trimming, the cutting, um, and the um, pressing for the block. And we'll be using um, the V-block tool again next week for um, and a, a um, technique sheet that I'll be showing you next week. So until next Tuesday, happy sewing. Uh, come see us if you get a chance to come see us. And we have um, all of the new Geisha uh, panel and the new Asian prints on our website. So if you are needing some of those prints before they're all gone, be sure and so shop early. So happy sewing. We'll see you next week live at 5.